Has this ever happened to you? I want my food now! Well, wait no longer. I'm Pampish Mappus here to introduce the Freddy Fast Food Delivery Machine. The FFFDM will bring your food to your plate in less than half the time. Now that's a bargain I'm dying for. Don't wait. Try the FFFDM today. Freddy Fast Food Delivery Machine is only available in select Freddy Fast Food locations. Freddy Fast Food Delivery Machine is only available in Fast Food Corporation. Any public listings are false. Any location contract is held machine will be fine or worse. Freddy Fast Food Delivery Machine is not for public. A Bite at Freddy's is a game I had no idea was even coming out anytime soon. I knew it was made by Garrett McKay, the same guy behind both Fredbear's Fright and Fredbear and Friends Left the Rod. I thought I remembered seeing a trailer for it months ago, but besides that, I had nothing to really go off of. A self-described bite-sized experience, a bite at Freddy centers around you working with the manager of the Freddy Fazbear's Grill establishment to test out the food conveyor system to see if it's ready for the public. Simple concept, all things considered, but what makes it so good? Is there something specific? Something that makes it stand out? That je ne sais quoi that makes the game what it is? Well, yes. Everything, the whole game. I'm, <laughs> I'm stalling for time at this point. The game exists, let's go. Course 1. A Bite at Freddy's is split into four courses to, you know, keep that food theme going. It's a small change, but it keeps stuff fresh and also tells the player that this game isn't going to be your standard Five Night Fair. Yeah, it's text in the corner of the screen, but it's still there. I do need to talk about it. I'm still just going to call them nights during each segment to keep things from getting confusing, but just know when I'm talking about Night 1, Night 2, and Night 3, I'm really talking about Course 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Starting off, the manager lets us know about the food delivery system and how it works. In order to make sure things are working smoothly, smoothly and as they should be, the manager will be in the kitchen making three different meals. As he makes them, they will be sent down into party room A, then party room B, and finally our office. Each time the food gets delivered, our job is to confirm they arrived using the camera. Once all three orders are complete, the night is over. Conveyor openings in the kitchen and the two party rooms can be remotely closed using the camera. Not that you would need to do that, of course. If anything seems to be going wrong or there is any foreign object inside the conveyor, it can be remotely stopped using the lever to the left of the opening inside your office. This will come in handy later as a last resort. The manager then tells us about the power situation. A Bite at Freddy's is a power management game, but not in the way you'd expect. Instead of trying to keep the power above zero, you are instead trying to keep it as close to zero as possible. Most actions in this game use power, which causes the progress bar at the bottom left to slowly rise. If the bar reaches zero, the generator overloads and you cannot use anything until it goes back down to zero. Most of the time, you won't have to worry about the power as long as you keep your eye on the restaurant. Only now does the manager tell us that the robot animatronics that act as entertainment for the guest are going to start roaming around. Not that they're going to cause you any harm, it's just a heads up. And that's about all the information we're given. Let's get into the game. During course one, only two animatronics are active. Talk Show Bonnie and Talk Show Chica. Talk Show Bonnie will make his way around the restaurant. Starting at the show stage, he'll walk into the dining area before going to either the center hall or backstage. If he moves to the backstage, he'll make his way back out into the dining area before starting the process again. From the center hall, Bonnie will either move to the closet or the kitchen. If he's in the kitchen, shut the conveyor doors so he can't enter. If you do it fast enough, he'll head right back out of the kitchen. If he's in the closet, Bonnie is going to show up in your office. Once you hear a sort of metal scraping noise, he has arrived. Shut the lights off so he can't see you and he'll leave soon after. Bonnie is the easiest animatronic in the game. Nothing he does is necessarily difficult to take care of. Shutting the lights off is incredibly easy and there is a large window to execute it. He's just an annoyance, if anything. The other animatronic, Takcho Chica, follows the same design structure of either trying to enter the conveyor or heading to your office. Chica instead likes to enter party room B. If she is directly next to the conveyor, you need to shut the door, but if she's just in the room, you're fine for the time being. Shut the door and she'll be gone quick. Like Bonnie, if she's in the closet, she's going to be heading to your office. When leaving the closet, however, instead of just going straight to your office, she instead heads back into the center hall, peering into the room. Once she leaves there, she'll show up in front of you, hiding under the desk. When she is in the state, you must equip the toy pop gun on your desk, and get ready, because when she jumps up ready to attack, you must shoot her dead on, otherwise you'll be dead. Takshu Chica is one of the coolest, most stylized mechanics in a fan game I've seen, but it's very finicky. Sometimes it will look like you hit her dead on, but it will still count as a miss. Later on, I did find out you don't have to be super quick with it, just make sure you aim directly in between her eyes and you're probably going to be good. Besides that, night one is a breeze. Turn off the lights for Bonnie, shoot Chica in the face, make sure they can't get in the conveyor, deliver all three meals, boom it's done. Like the Playtime of Percy video, I'm going to be doing a tier list of the animatronics because I think that's fun. Talk Show Bonnie goes in D tier, he's very easy to deal with and I didn't feel like he was a threat. Talk Show Chica goes in C tier. I really like her mechanic but it's very finicky. Course 2. 
At the end of course one, the bulb on the order status machine gives out and explodes in your face. The manager tells us to replace the bulb, which you should do if you plan on continuing the game anytime soon. The manager tells us that if the room happens to get a bit stuffy, there's an air vent with a toggleable fan directly above us. This seems like a nothing burger, but it's actually the game telling us how to deal with the next animatronic, Talk Show Freddy. Talk Show Freddy does the exact same thing as the last two, entering the center hall before trying to enter the conveyor in party room A. However, Freddy might decide to enter the air vent instead. Once inside the air vent, he'll slowly make his way to the office. Once he shows up on the vent camera, enable the fan and he'll make his way back into the center hall. You have a bit of time before you have to turn the fan on, but it is best to do it as soon as he enters the air vent. If you wait too long to turn on the fan, the fan will cut Freddy's head clean off, with his head now in the office with you. What does this mean for Freddy though? Freddy will now move faster than before, and from testing, seems to now favor the air vent instead of the conveyor, which, you know, makes sense, he wants his head back. It's best to keep Freddy's head on his shoulders, as along with being faster, Freddy is harder to see on the camera, as there's no big ass head to look for. Besides that, night 2 is the same as before, just a bit harder. Before the next night starts, the manager tells us he had heard a few of the screws inside the conveyor belt pop off, which means now we have to head inside the machine to fix it ourselves. This is the only mechanic like this in the entire game, and it makes me wish there was more because what's available here is actually pretty neat. The minigame consists of unscrewing the screws currently inside the machine and replacing it with new ones. While doing this, Bonnie will try to attack us. If you see him down the conveyor, you have to pull this bar thing in front of you to direct the conveyor belt to a different direction other than where you are. Besides that, there's nothing really going on. You can complete it in like a minute. I wish this was either expanded upon or there were more things like it because it's really fun. It's cool. Back to the tier list, Talk Show Freddy is going to go in A tier. His mechanic is unique, but not too hard to deal with. And the fact that his head can come off, that's pretty cool. This got me off guard the first time I saw it. It's neat. Course 3. Like before, we get a call from the manager who lets us in on a very important piece of information. If the cameras start acting up at all, we can refresh them using the backstage camera. If there's an animatronic messing with the wires in the back, a refresh could also shock them away. That's about it. Thank you, manager. Very cool. Night 3, like before, adds one new animatronic. Talk show Foxy. Why is the fox paying taxes? Why is he dressed like a lawyer? Why make the fox a fucking government official? Foxy starts in his own camera before making his way to the dining area and eventually backstage. Slowly but surely, Foxy will walk in, notice the wires, and get ready to bite down. If he does bite down, the cameras will go out and you'll be forced to use the backup cameras, causing your power to go down as long as you have them open. But if you refresh the camera right before he bites down, you'll shock Foxy. After this, Foxy will either head back to his camera, or he will get pissed and head into the kitchen to try and use the conveyor to run down into your office. If he close the conveyor, Foxy will make his way back to either his camera or the dining hall. And that's it. Foxy seems like a threat at first, but he is both the easiest to take care of and the easiest to keep an eye on. He stays in the same camera like 90% of the time. Besides that, the night is again the same as before. I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it, but you'd think there'd be a difficulty spike considering it's the end of the game, but there's not. It's weird. It's tier list time once again, we did this like a minute ago. Foxy goes in D tier, holy shit, he is easy to deal with, it's not even funny, he serves zero purpose other than to be there by necessity, holy god damn! For most players, this is the end of their playthrough. They got through the three main nights, all is good, they unlocked the extras menu where you can look at all the animatronics, and a paper friend. Who the fuck is paper friend? This isn't the whole game. Underneath the main nights and above the extras menu is one last challenge. Final course. You're awfully committed, aren't you? Or are you just looking for another bite? I tell you, back in the day, this place was jumping. We had families in and out all day, new shows, new events, the whole works. It all changed after the bite happened. Some kid went up and bit a huge chunk right out of Fredbear's face, tore it right off. Now he sits there all alone on his little stage inside the wall, slowly wearing away. The crew thinks he ought to be called Threadbear, a bit crooked, ain't it? Oh, one more thing. Sometimes the conveyor gets jammed around the party rooms. If that happens, just stop the conveyor for a little bit, and then it'll restart itself. Anywho, pardon my wobbling jaw, let's get her going! The new and final animatronic added is Threadbear. Threadbear is basically just every animatronic melted together, but just faster. In most cases, Threadbear will only have one move he makes before getting ready to kill you. In the party rooms, if he's in there, you have to instantly shut the conveyor, and in the vent, if you see him, you immediately turn on the fan. On your camera monitor, if the backstage has a flashing icon next to it, click on it and refresh the cameras. Otherwise, Threadbear will make you lose your connection. Besides that, like before, the night is just the same, but harder. I'm not really sure if it was intentional or not, but nothing here really feels like a final night, you know? It's harder, yeah, and there's a Fredbear variant, that's true, but it's just bland. 
Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Freddy all have unique mechanics. You think Threadbare would have his own mechanic? Rather than just being the rest of the cast, but the same. I like it, but when all is said and done, it just feels like one long night. We're going back to the tier list again, and despite everything I said, Threadbare is going to go into S tier. He's the only somewhat hard character to deal with. I like a bite at Freddy's, but I wish there was more substance. I wish there was more to do or different mechanics instead of just the same thing the entire time. Like most FNAF games, A Bite at Freddy's has a custom night, but unlike most FNAF fan games, A Bite at Freddy's has challenges- Yeah, we're talking about the challenges now, yeah! Challenges. A Bite at Freddy's has six different challenges available, most of them changing the core gameplay in some way. The first challenge is Basket Hunt. Instead of the usual three orders you have to confirm in order to beat the level, there's instead five. After each order is completed, it randomly spawns around the map, and in order to confirm the order, you have to find and then click on it using the camera. Besides that, it's the same as before. The animatronics active on this challenge are Freddy, Bonnie, and Threadbare. The next challenge, and my personal favorite, is Haunting Roulette. During this challenge, you are given a tool used to shock various items in your office and on the camera, at the cost of some power. Occasionally, when an animatronic gets ready to attack you, the tool you must use to defend against them will become haunted. If it flashes on screen, equip the shocker and use it on said tool. Or in the fan's case, click on the button next to the fan. It does make some things difficult, but luckily shocking the tool will cause the animatronic to retreat as if you defend it against them. It's a nice challenge. Haunting Roulette is to me what I wish Juniors was. That's not to say Juniors is a bad game, but it's not my favorite game by a long shot. The animatronics active on this challenge are Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. The third challenge is Cold Kitchen, and is by far the worst challenge in the entire game. Holy shit! The restaurant's heater is broken, so the building is incredibly cold. Because of this, the cameras will occasionally freeze, which means you have to refresh them as that somehow heats them back up. The best way to clear this challenge is to constantly refresh the cameras. I hate this. Yeah, it's a skill issue on my part, but it's not that it's hard, it's just that it's fucking annoying. Especially because on this night, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Threadbare are active. It'd be fine if all of them are active, but these four are fucking awful to deal with at the same time. All of them go to different rooms, and Threadbare goes to every room. So you can't just focus on a few cameras, you have to constantly look around the entire establishment to see if Threadbare decided to move an inch this time. I hate it, but that's just because I'm bad. The next challenge in order is out of service. It's just night three, but you can't stop the conveyor. I, I have nothing to say. I barely stopped the conveyor as is during my playthrough, so for me it's literally just night 3. This challenge feels like it belongs farther up on the list, I don't know, it just might be me. The second to last challenge is Lunch Rush, the first challenge to have all 5 animatronics active at once. Lunch Rush makes it so you have to take care of 7 orders instead of 3. For the first 6 orders, they will be ping-ponging between party room A and B, the last one being the same as usual. It's just a longer final course, it's boring, really boring. The final challenge is the obligatory max difficulty mode, or in this game's case, 520 mode. I'm not gonna go into detail about this, you know, you know what max mode is. You watch FNAF tubers. Now, that's about everything in the game. Let's wrap things up. Conclusion. Sometimes, a fan game comes out that blows the rest of the competition out of the water. Either from style, gameplay, or both. For me, that was Playtime with Percy. For others, that was probably Joy of Creation story mode. For crackheads, it was Dormitibus. But as of now, that game is a bite at Freddy's. I haven't mentioned this yet, but the animatronics are based off of the old portrait Chuck E. Cheese robots. If you need an example of what I'm talking about, take a look at Five Nights at Chuck E. Cheese's Remastered. That's definitely a robot right there. The animatronics in a bite at Freddy's takes the design of these animatronics and makes them more modern. If there was an animatronic pizzeria around today, I feel like the animatronics would look like the ones here. The gameplay takes the core concept of FNAF and turns it on its head. Every character is unique in some way, either by difficulty or just mechanic-wise. In most of the custom nights in the official games, there isn't really any reason to play it besides max mode, because in FNAF 1 it's all door-based, and FNAF 2 it's all mask-based besides one character. In A Bite at Freddy's, because every animatronic has a different mechanic, give or take, you can pick and choose and still have a fun time. I wish more fan games were like A Bite at Freddy's, but if that were the case, amazing examples of creativity like this would be a dime a dozen. It would lose its importance and meaning. Every time things seem to be getting stale in the fan game scene, one good thing comes out and changes everything. I hope more things like this come out soon, because I'm loving every second of it. Check the game out if you haven't already. I have nothing else to say. Chicago!